When you do something long enough, people start to come to you for whatever particular thing you do. You become good at it. So I'm just doing my normal day-to-day -day routine and all of a sudden I get a message from my brother-in-law. Hey, I found these eggs. What do you think they are? Well, I don't know. Send me a picture. Just because you like an animal doesn't mean another person is not completely terrified of that same animal. These could be snake eggs. This joker brings them over in an egg carton. It was so ironic to see, and I imagine their placement being much better, but he did put them on a moist towel like I suggested to make sure the eggs don't dry up and shrivel. Perfect. Next was to set up an incubation habitat that these eggs would stay moist and give the baby reptiles, because at this point I had realized that they were definitely reptiles. Most birds don't lay eggs on the ground, and really the only other creatures would be reptiles. These are far too small for alligators or American crocodiles, which aren't in this area anyhow. And I just really wasn't certain whether these would be turtle eggs or snake eggs. And honestly, turtle eggs typically are more round. These were more oval, so I really assumed these were snake eggs. Hence why I created their incubation chamber in a sealed container so the snakes wouldn't just slither away. I wanted to be sure that the snakes had the proper placement when they were to be relocated to their new habitat. Rule number one when incubating eggs, especially reptile eggs, you cannot allow them to dry out. They will shrivel and could potentially cause problems for the newborn babies. The shells could be really tough and hard for them to break free. Shells with wrinkles may not allow the proper resistance for them to break them being too elastic in nature, like a rubber band. Also, it could lead to dehydration for whatever creatures are incubating inside of these eggs, even cause premature birth as well. The next most crucial step after making sure they stay moist is to ensure that they have the right temperature. So you know they were laid here in Florida. So this is the right temperature outside. But you don't want to put them in a sunny place because they're literally just roast right inside of the eggs. The last step, and probably most important, is patience. These little babies inside of these eggs know the perfect time for them to hatch. And it's so crazy, when they start to hatch, they'll all hatch at the same time. I don't know how they know when to hatch, but they just do. I waited for nearly a week until finally, today. Well, here you go. Okay, y'all, I'm so excited. I'm not gonna lie, I already peeked, but the eggs are hatching. Y'all, get a load of this. They are not snake eggs at all. These, in fact, are baby turtles. This is what happened after they hatched. It's the next day, and I'm super excited to check out these turtles. I don't know how many have hatched so far. There was, I think, three or four that had broken the shell last night. I'm going to unveil them and see if they fully emerged from their shells and how many have actually hatched. Brought them outside because we're getting ready to do the new enclosure. Oh, a couple of them have completely come out of the shell. Now check this out. Okay, so they're burrowing down. That means that they're ready to be relocated. They're looking for a way out of this container. That is crazy. So they stayed moist. Let's let's just get them out of here and just see what these actually look like. I think the biggest part about finding mystery eggs is the suspense of not knowing what's inside. However, I didn't realize that after hatching, I, as well as the whole community on Facebook, would have trouble identifying these babies. The baby turtles emerged from the eggs and were burrowing down into the muddy bedding. Newly hatched baby turtles usually have to dig a little in order to escape the burrow their mother created before laying eggs. It's not uncommon for the whole nest of turtles to not survive. Due to various factors like inability to escape the mother's burrow, human accidental disruption of burrows, predation of burrows by foxes and raccoons, and even when they're hatched, in the journey from burrow to water, predation from birds and domestic animals like dogs and cats, all before they've even made it to the water. So far, all I've determined from these baby turtles is that they're water turtles. I'm not 100% certain on the species. This little guy was filthy, so I cleaned him up in some water, and this is what he looked like afterwards. I felt like it was some sort of cooter troll, but I wasn't sure. I follow a group called Florida Backyard Snakes. I decided to post this picture of the turtle there because a lot of reptile experts are in this group. I got many different replies. Western slider, however I live on the east coast. Turtle, obviously. Yellow belly, red belly, or red ear slider. However, I didn't see red ears. Looks like a pet. Painted turtle, and someone even said box turtle. So I uploaded a few better pictures, even showing the underside. Right now, I'm still in limbo as to determining what the species of this turtle is. Finding out the species is truly important in order to ensure it has a proper diet and proper placement when I do release it, or them. 
much more important thing right now is to ensure that they're in the proper habitat to develop the life skills they need to survive in the wild. So we're here at the pond looking for aquatic plants that we can put into our turtle's new habitat by finding a variety of aquatic plants and putting them into their small ecosystem we're creating. We will give them more life experience and help them develop the skills they need to be successful when they finally grow up. But I just noticed right over here on these water hyacinth plants, a frog species I've yet to see in my yard. And this is super important species that is not commonly found in this area. Now, let's go ahead and look at this frog a little bit closer so I can explain the details and why it's so important. Just because this frog was found in a pond does not mean it's an aquatic species of frog. In fact, all amphibians rely heavily on water mainly to reproduce. And all frogs and toads lay eggs in the water that eventually turn into tadpoles and polywogs and eventually the Charizard are their metamorphosis an actual frog and when they finally reach adulthood they'll be able to reproduce and help their species go on introducing hyla versicolor why this frog is so amazing well it exhibits beautiful camouflage color but what you can't see is the stunning golden yellow between its legs the latin name says it all Hyla versicolor. It refers to this frog's ability to change colors, kind of like a chameleon or more commonly seen around here, a knolls. Typically exhibiting lighter coloration during nighttime and darker during the day. But to me, the most amazing part is that we are at the southernmost point in this frog's range. And this was the first time in my whole life I've even seen this species. Amazing, right? To think, if I hadn't been given a free piece of pond liner, and I hadn't decided to turn a desert-like grassy section in my yard into a little oasis, if I didn't embellish this pond with a variety of aquatic plants, and if I didn't buy a water pump, this frog may not have been in my yard. This pond certainly would not exist. The frog may not have been lured in by the sound of running water. A simple puddle would not have had the resources to sustain a frog like Hyla Versicolor. The biodiverse pond offers many options for food sources because some food sources may not be there all year round. This yard certainly would not support a breeding population of Hyla Versicolor. These frogs themselves are essential food sources for other species like snakes, birds, and fish. While a small pond certainly can't sustain a genetic diverse population of any organism, a small pond can create a biologically diverse ecosystem that can sustain small populations of various organisms. This is why it is so important to select a wide variety of different plants and other organisms that can act as a food source for our baby turtles to help them develop the life skills they need to be successful upon release. A good foundation could be the difference in these babies surviving. We're here at the pond finding aquatic plants. So far I found some dollar weed, a water hyacinth, a spade plant, and two other water plants I'm not sure of the ID on. Wait, how rude of me. Back to the turtles. We aren't even sure how many viable eggs there were. From the photos in the previous video, you knew for certain there were three. Well, we started with seven eggs. And I'm pleased to inform you that there are seven baby turtles successfully incubated. Amazing, right? Well, it took three days before each of the turtles fully emerged from its shell. Well, its egg shell. I didn't rush anything. Like I said previously, patience is extremely important with these baby turtles. They will leave the shell when they're ready. One by one as the turtles left their egg shell, I placed them on the basking rock in their newly designed. They could wander off the basking rock when they were ready to be submerged for the first time in the water like nature intended for them. We had so many comments as to the identification of these baby turtles. It seems as though they were either a slider or possibly a Swanee River Cooter turtle. In this case, it doesn't really matter. The only distinguishing feature is the lines on his face. We'll get into that later. Hence why so many people just weren't quite certain. The turtles' heads were tucked back as if they were scared. I mean, can you blame them? Okay, so back to the centerpiece in my living room. This is a 32 gallon aquarium that was literally sat in my living room since 4th of July last year, a whole year ago. I'd been contemplating turning it into a saltwater fish tank, but after speaking to my neighbor, he said just how expensive and hard it really was. So I got scared, and I didn't really have the extra finances to invest in the, all the right filtration and whatnot. Most of my money goes into my other passion, turning this five acre barren grassy desert into a rainforest like environment. I just imagine myself in like an Amazon rainforest, even though it's really just my yard. But these turtles are amazing. I've been feeding them a diet of Reptomen, which is a nutrient rich diet specifically formulated for turtles. I've had great success with this on the last turtles I raised, the mud turtle and two Swanee River Cooter turtles before. 
But this is seven newly hatched baby turtles. And I really want to be sure I'm doing everything I can. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I'll take them seriously and consider doing it. Like various other food sources. And I haven't even had a chance to tell you my grand plan with these baby turtles. I mean, they're going for like $29.99 online. Seriously though, give me a heart to support wildlife conservation. And if you would, follow and help support this channel.